those fears and anxieties and the byproduct of it, which is putting things off, procrastinating, you know, letting things go that are important and meaningful to us. The the thing that we got to show up with more strongly and pervasively is the love that we have for the thing, mm. you know, and, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes, sometimes it can feel like that's gone away too. You know, like I, 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 I've gone through those, those stages too, where it's just like, I don't know if I even care about this anymore. I don't even know if I, if I love this anymore. And maybe you don't, you know, and, and, and then it's up to you to find out, okay, well, what do you have love for in your life? Cause that's always the direction to go. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte. Identifying your blocks and demystifying your struggles so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. Well, we're doing this right now, Brandon. We're doing this thing right now. We're doing it. (laughs) <laughs> We're actually doing it. Um, and in this conversation that we are having and doing, uh, we're we're having a discussion. We're going to get into this exploration for, I think, is a fairly, you know, uh, a, a relatable human challenge problem. I know that, uh, you know, as much as I'd like to say that I have this one uh, completely uh, nipped in the bud, uh, I definitely don't. And, uh, and it's this notion of, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know what I need to do, have to do, but I'm not doing it. And I guess you could throw that into the category of like, like a type of procrastination. I think that's kind of like an, an inner workings of a procrastination, um, of putting things off and, and, you know, that, that frustration, that inner frustration, um, and guilt and shame and stuff that can come with that, with, um, not, not doing the things, you know, not doing the things that, that bring you towards the things that matter to you. Um, so that's the kind of conversation that we're having today that we're, that we're going to explore. Um, I'm really interested in this one because I know I've got a lot of work to do and, And, you know, and to be fair, we all have our days too. You know, there's, there's days when it's just like, you don't have it in you and that's okay. You know, and, and, and you have days where you do have it in you. And, and there's that, I think that's an aspect of this conversation that to have as well. So we're going to dive into a bunch of areas. Um, Brandon, what do you want to say to start this thing off? This is one of those things I, I feel like everybody can relate to, to some degree, because the initially when you don't know what you need to do, that's a certain challenge, right? And I think we all experience that at some point with anything we do. But then there comes a point, and this is such an interesting stage, and you can get really stuck on it. And I know that I have, in some areas of my life, gotten stuck on this stage in in certain forms, I would even argue for years. Although I've evolved it in a way, it's one of those things that sometimes you you work to take it on and you're like, it's irrational. I don't even know why I'm not doing it. I'm not really like, and it's a feeling maybe, and it's a thought, but the thought is foggy and the feelings unclear. And, uh, there's something, you know, for me, at least I'll say, you know, it's like a fear comes up or a, an anxiety or whatever. And, you know, this can be, it's interesting because, well, I'll share a story that might be that might be helpful in kind of, you know, laying this out. But I remember, I remember, uh, I was doing my writing course. This is way, way back. And, um, there was this guy who I thought would really benefit from it. I was so scared to call and I don't even know why, but I'm just like, man, he's going to be like, like this guy's so like, he's going to be like, why are you even inviting me to this? I don't need your writing course. I don't know what I was imagining, right? It's <laughs> like, I was just like, you can't offer him any value, you know? But I'm like, but it is valuable. But, you know, but I was like, and then it was just kind of like, well, 
what's the worst? Like, like maybe just invite him, like, like tell him about it, or maybe he can help you like find some people, whatever. Right. And I remember they call it the thousand pound phone because you just can't pick it up. You can't pick Mm -hmm. it up and like dial the numbers. Um, but I mustered it together. I finally got the courage. I just, it was one of those ones where I just pressed the numbers and I said, okay. And it was ringing (laughs) being like, ah, ah, what am I doing? (laughs) Like, you know, back up, pull the shoot, pull the shoot. And he answered and we started talking and then I was telling him, you know, Hey, this is what I'm doing. And his response was so not what I thought it would be. He was like, thanks for thinking of me, man. He's like, thanks so much. That sounds awesome. And he was just like, so supportive and encouraging and like, (laughs) it was the total opposite. And I was like, why was I so scared to call him? And just yeah. share something that I'm up to, you know, and like in my, in my mind, it was so irrational, but in my mind, I'm just like, I don't know. He's going to like, like, this is going to like, I think sometimes I think, um, it's going to somehow ruin our friendship or, you know, I'm out of place to do it. I, I don't know what is even going on for me. And, you know, like, I, I don't want to get too into too far into the psychology of this just yet, but like, you know, I think, um, being bullied and when I was in high school and being a bit of an outsider when I was younger gave me a certain kind of way of navigating the world where I know that if I keep to myself that I'm not going to get hassled, uh, I'm a little bit safer. And so I think sometimes when my anxiety comes up around these types of issues, it's really just me going like, well, if you don't make the call, you'll be safe. You won't get hassled. Nothing can go wrong. And it just feels safer. But I know I need to pick up the phone and call, you know, but the, it's it's not healthy when, and this happens to me occasionally, where it extends to much more than just one person. It's just like, um, I don't know. I, I don't even know. I just, I feel like, uh, I just feel like sometimes I just can't do it. And, and, mm-hmm. and I know I need to, and I know it's very important and I know I have value to offer, but um Yeah. It's, it's, it's very irrational. It's a, it's a, it's, you know, but I know what I need to do. I I know how to, how to generate business. I know how to, how to get referrals and how to make sales and how to get leads. I know how to do that. And it's, it's a lot of it is messaging, calling, or at least putting yourself out there. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So, I mean, I'll throw that out just to kind of uh, maybe put some, some paint on this blank canvas uh, you know, from my perspective and maybe other people can relate, but I feel like that a lot of things, they have a similar, there's something about that that's similar to everything. Yeah. And there's, uh, it's interesting. There's almost like this, this thing that's popping to, up to me that says like, you know, w- within anything, you know, you're literally talking about making a phone call, but with anything that, you know, you're putting off that, you know, and I I actually want to add one element to this is sometimes you don't know exactly what it is you need to do. You know, you know, you need to do something and you might have some vague ideas about, you know, what some possible things are, but you don't, sometimes you don't always know exactly what to do, but you know, you need to be doing something. Um, and, but something about this whole like phone thing is that like, that you can sort of like apply, I think to, uh, metaphorically to any of these scenarios is, well, you first is, is you need to say hello yes <laughs> you need to say hello you're you 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 need to be heard you know like you, there there needs to be something that you put out there to another person who hears it you need to say hello uh on some other level or with you know from the artist's perspective right if like you're a writer it's like you need to say hello you need to you you need to put a word onto <laughs> onto your your word processor you know it's like you need to you need to say hello that that's one thing that that you know on some level it's like what is that that first uh that first kind of of step and another thing that i want to uh point out as well is you know it's really fascinating that People think that artists uh, are really, um, you know, like are, are really just flamboyant and, and you know, outgoing types of, of people and, and some are, but 
most of them I would say are not. Most artists are quite introverted. Um, many, many times are quite private people. Um, I know that, that that's the case with, with myself and in, in many of the things that you were saying about, you know, uh, being bullied and, and things like that. I, I've, I've had, you know, being bullied experiences in, in for a good chunk of, of my life and, uh, and acting in many ways, uh, when I got into acting, what I, I loved about acting is that, um, and I don't think I was conscious of this when I was younger, but now looking back, it's quite obvious. It's just like, oh, well, that was an, an outlet for, for, for me, for all of these things that, um, I was afraid to say all of these things in me that I was afraid to show, um, because I'd learned this way of being in the world and being with, with other people, um, to keep myself safe in those contexts, to keep myself safe, not just necessarily physically, although sometimes it, it, it was physically, but other times just from, from, you know, taking sort of like verbal, you know, emotional types of abuse from people, um, you know, so you just learn to kind of sink back and then you, you have this art form that allows you this space for all of this shit that's inside of you. And, and it's an incredibly uh, beautiful thing. It's an incredibly powerful thing. Um, but there's still those elements that can remain. And especially um, for, for artists who, you know, for people who are who get into an art or find that in art and then deciding to take that on as as a career path well now it's like you now you have to put yourself back out there again you know like it's it's you have there there's that demand of you've you've got to speak out in in that way and and a lot of that stuff can come back up a lot of those patterns and, and, and habits and, and fears and anxieties, which, um, you know, can become generalized too, you know, like where it doesn't necessarily have some specific thing that you can put your finger on, but you just, you just feel it. You just feel this thing and moving past that and, or moving through it, um, can be a real challenge and it can be an, an ongoing struggle. It's not, it can be something that's not necessarily a one and done situation, but, but something that, that continually comes up over and over and over again and how you find your way through that, um, you know, is, it can be very personal to anyone. I'll, I know I'm speaking a lot here. I'll turn it back over to you, Brandon, but like, you know, I, I know one thing for me, I have it, um, you know, written on my board and I've talked about, talked about this a, a few times on the show, but it's like, for me, a lot of times when I'm feeling anxiety around doing the things that I, that I need to be doing, you know, in terms of, um, connecting with other actors and putting out, um, an, a, a new class that I think will be really valuable. It's like, cause that's the thing. It's like, I know I'm like, I think that you know, you never know, but you, you kind of have to take that, that leap of faith where, you know, in terms of as a teacher, I go, it's like, oh, I have this new workshop, this new class that I want to put out there. I think that this is going to be something great, you know, but you, you, you're still taking a leap because you don't know if anyone else will think the same thing. Right. But that's the leap that you're demanded to, to take and that anxiety can come up. And for me, one of the things that I remind myself is to be nothing mm. is to be nothing very often uh you know a lot of my anxiety comes from this idea of having to be something um having to be a big deal and you know i don't want to beat on this one too hard because i've i feel like i've talked about it a lot on on our podcast but it that is a big one for me. And I know it's a big one for, for a lot of other people as well, but this thing of like, Oh, it has to be this. And what if people, you know, it's like, the, there's all this stuff of like, Oh, you, you've got to be somebody and you've got to be something with this thing. And as soon as I can actually really connect with like, Oh, be nothing. This doesn't have to be anything. I don't have to be anything. 
I don't like it's I can I can breathe a little bit easier and then do the thing that I need to do and I can do it a lot more calmly which always is helpful too <laughs> yeah well there's there's so many good things that you pointed out if I could go back just to the beginning um talking about not kind of knowing, you know, you need to do something, but you don't know exactly what you need to do. There's also this other element of, you know what you need to do, but you haven't broken it down enough to be able to do it yet is another thing. So for example, for me, um, well, let's just say, I mean, there's probably a list of people that I could call and message and invite to my next round of stuff. And I had some interesting feelings come up about that. And I was like, wow, I haven't touched base with these people for a long time. You know, I'd be calling them out of nowhere. Um, you know, the truth of the matter is I'd like to say that I'm thinking about them in terms that I want to call them and just say, Hey, and catch up and see what's going on in their life. And there is a part of me that does, there is a part of me that does, but the reason I'd be calling if I did message or call them is because I want to invite them to something I'm doing. And so there's this, there's this hang up for me, right? Because it's like, well, you know, like who are you to call somebody and like, you know, and basically just out of the no, nowhere, invite them into something and you know, whatever. And it's like, well, just because I'm inviting them to something doesn't mean I don't care what is going on in their life and what they're up to. And, and also if I found out what's going on in their life, would not make them a good fit at this time to do what I'm doing, then I wouldn't invite them. And I would just, you know, I just connect with them and move on and that's fine. So there's not really an issue there. So one of the things I realized is why don't I just make a list of the names of these people who I feel like if I called, there's some weird uncomfortability coming, coming up for me around that. Right. And just, why don't you just look at why do you feel weird about calling this person? You know, because usually when I do call somebody, we end up connecting, we end up chatting. It usually goes really well. So what what am I building up in my mind, right? And this is like, mm -hmm. I don't even have to call them, but it's just putting their name on paper, considering calling that specific person and seeing what comes up. And so I think like to, you know, to bring this into a parallel with maybe an artist who is an actor, uh, you know, maybe you're like, thinking, okay, well, I want to meet with this big agent or this manager or this casting director or whatever. It Before you kind of get all caught up and like, am I ready? Can I do this? Like, why don't you just go through the process of going like, you know, and check in with yourself and, and make it a kind of like a, an investigation, you know? What, what, what am I afraid of? What's going on? What do I think I, where do I think I need to be? What do I think I need to do? And then maybe the next step isn't talking to them after that. Maybe the next step is talking to someone you trust or someone in the industry, maybe a teacher, maybe a mentor, maybe whatever, and saying, Hey, so this is what I want to do. And this is what's going on for me. And then, you know, he, can you give me some feedback? What are your thoughts on this? Have you ever experienced this? Uh, you know, and, and you piece your way there, you like incrementally work your way towards what you ultimately, whatever it is that you ultimately need to do that you're resisting doing. Um, you know, with screenwriting, I actually firmly believe that the words fade in are for no other reason than for the writer to not have a blank page when they start a screenplay. <laughs> because just for the people who don't know too much about screenwriting, every screenplay is supposed to start with fade in. And it's on the left side and you fade into the movie and it lets everyone know this is the very first scene and very first page of the movie and we're we're fading in and we're starting the movie and it's just a cue you're not on any middle page this is the first page you know whatever but once you have fade in written there's something written now you don't have anything else but the movie has technically started you know the screenplay has technically started yeah. so i do feel there's a there's a part of this evan we're talking about which is like it's so hard to get from neutral to first gear mm -hmm. and first gear doesn't do you much but it does get you moving. Right. And, uh, yeah. but that is the hardest gear to get into both in an automobile and in life. Um, because if you can master that transition, 
then you can really do anything. But it's so easy to just stay in neutral, right? It's so easy to not do anything because nothing can go wrong. But sometimes I think we're trying to shift from neutral into third gear or fifth gear or mm -hmm. even second gear. And it's just too much. It's, it's, it's maybe it's possible, but it's, 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 it's such a big ask of ourselves. And that's why we just go, oh, I'd rather just not do it, you know, because the chance yeah. of failure or the chance of not feeling good or the chance of messing up is just too high. So I feel like, you know, as you were talking, that was one thing that was coming up for me and many other things, but I don't know, maybe you have uh, some comments on that, that you, I, I do have some comments and, right. and there are actually some comments uh, that were from our last episode, which I think, what did we call that one? Where's the love? Where's the love? Oh, Something yeah. like that. You know, it's, it's just reminding me of that. It's like, you know, it's like so often that too is, is a thing that, that gets you hung up on the first page. You know, it's like, is, is getting in, in, into gear sometimes it's that and as you've alluded to not even necessarily alluded but as you have very strongly explained and described and suggested sometimes there's this thing that you've built up in your mind about you know how somebody is going to react to this um or you know the 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 weight and the the hugeness of the undertaking that you want to be doing, but you're not doing right. And very often uh, I think the problem comes down to uh, you know, you're making this about all of the wrong things again. Right. And, and I might chart that back up to some, somewhere in that uh, in that branching thing of like being somebody right? It's just like, oh, I, I got to write this script. Okay. But the script has to do this and has to be this and has to be that. And it has to be my calling card and it has to impress people. And it has to, and, and, and people have to think that I'm amazing and brilliant and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, you, where's the love, right? What connect back to what has brought you to want to write this story in the first place? What has brought you to wanting to uh, write your first EP, you know, your first album in the first place, to make your first film, to act in your first show, or maybe not even your first, it could be your 12th show and you're running into this, you know? Yes. Like yes. You're, you're, it, could be, it could be every single one, but you, it's so, I, I think that once we, when we start putting all of that other shit ahead of what this is really about and what's really meaningful for you, I think that is when it can become so much harder because you're trying to check a bunch of boxes and, and, and answer a bunch of things that you, you can't really know answers to. You know, I think that that's like one of the weird little um, a pretty uh, extraordinary but debilitating tricks that we can play on ourselves, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Like, and and one that I I use as an example all the time is is um when when actors say something like, "Oh, I like I want to make interesting choices," or when a teacher tells tells an actor to make interesting choices, it's just like what a stupid thing to say to somebody <laughs> like it's like it's it's well intentioned I, I always try and preface it with that it's well intentioned but it's just like it's so dumb when you really <laughs> put it under examination because it's like well what's interesting right because normally it's like it, it, it's gonna what's interesting and and when you try and, and approach it from that angle is is you end up coming up with a bunch of just stupid things for their own sake and and you're left also in a in a kind of you're you're left in a in a space of of still fear i i i believe because you're trying to be like oh well what's interesting to that casting director or to that audience or to whatever and it's like you don't actually know that you don't know what's going to be interesting to them so you put yourself in this 
I guess, kind of a double bind situation where you're trying to do this thing that's interesting because you think it's going to be interesting to them, but you don't really know if it will be interesting to them, but you keep on pushing into it. And it's just like, it just creates anxiety. Like mm. just thinking about it for me, just it creates a kind of anxiety because you are trying to answer something that isn't answerable. You're trying to um, go on something that you don't, don't know as if you have, you're trying to control something that you have no control over. That's essentially what it is. Um, there we go. It took me a little while to get there, <laughs> but that, that's what the anxiety is. The anxiety is that you are trying to control something that you don't have control over. And deep down, there's a part of you that knows that because that's why you're so anxious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why, that's why the fear is there is because it's like you, is because you actually don't know. Right. As opposed to, you know, I, I, I say like for actors, just like ask yourself what, what is burning in me that I have to say about this part. <laughs> that's a place because that's connected to you to some part in you that has something to say that is is not interested in whether someone else is going to think it's interesting right it's it's not concerned with that it's concerned with what am i bringing to this thing from me from the from the deepest parts of me and then we have somewhere where we can go and you don't you still don't know if the person's you know who's going to watch it is going to find it interesting but you're at least not really concerning yourself with it and then the byproduct is typically that the person watching it finds it very interesting because you've got something real going on mm -hmm. right and and that's kind of but it's it's sometimes it, we have to play these little sort of we have to short circuit these these things that are in operation yeah. You know, the thing that comes up for me as you're talking about this is authenticity keeps kind of beating a drum here in the background for me, because it's like, when you, when you think that you have to be more than you are, when you have to, when you have to be something, not just more than you are, but other than you are, and that somehow what you are is somehow not enough. And I think like when you're, when you are, when you are um, contained in your life, like you, you haven't had a lot of chance to really truly express yourself. You haven't really come out of your shell. You can look like a very boring, normal, usual person. And why do we become this kind of contained version of ourselves? Well, I mean, there's a lot of pressure to fit in. There's a lot of pressure to basically uh, agree with the crowd, you know, to not rock the boat. There's all this pressure we have all the time. I mean, when you talk about being bullied in school, and I, and I talk about that, I mean, something about anyone who is bullied, it usually means that you somehow stood out. And you stood out in a way where people felt that, they should put you back in line or that that you had a vulnerability they could pick on or other people were maybe fitting with them and so they could kind of team up on you and so they felt like they had that sided right and so there this this pressure of basically following the herd is a very it's a very real thing for all of us right we we as much as we end up kind of breaking away from it and as much as you learn if you if you can or have the courage to step outside of it i i'm aware of what it is to be normal or usual or common or to fit in or to not be weird and i think those are important things i actually don't think that those should be scoffed at because some people who don't have a good sensitivity to something that's actually weird or inappropriate they have really, really poor social lives. And they also, they can also damage relationships because they're so out of touch with what is essentially okay or appropriate. 
And I'm not saying that you should always be appropriate, but if you're going to be inappropriate, I think you should know that you're being inappropriate. I think that you should be aware that to someone else, this is inappropriate so yeah. that you can have the, the, the understanding of why it might disrupt their little world. And I say little world because usually people like, like one thing I love about actors and being in acting classes is actors in general, not always, but in general, they're trying to play other characters. They're trying to expand. They're trying to try new things. They're, they're constantly dabbling in these new, new fields of exploration and psychology and whatnot. And so I found with, with actors, uh, not always, but many times to be some of the most accepting and open people I've ever met. Um, you know, I remember doing an acting class where when we started the class, everybody would get up, they'd put on some music and you would just dance and everybody danced. And so hard for me, man. It was so hard. Felt so silly and like mm. ridiculous. And then it was not even just like, it wasn't even dancing to look good. It was dancing to express yourself, which is even weirder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and then you're like, oh man, like I'm an, I'm an athlete. Like I'm like, this is not we don't do this. Like if I did this in front of the guys, I get beat, you know, like, it's kind of like, uh, yeah. you know, and, and I'm sure it's, it's different for everybody. Right. I'm just kind of sharing a little, my, my version, but we all have our hangups. We all have our things. And so breaking away from how you think you need to be, to be okay in this world to, uh, it, it's challenging and learning to express yourself is not always easy. And, and, you know, Evan, I'll be honest with you. I kind of forget why I went down this path, but it's something to do with what we were talking about in, in being interesting because, you know, if you're too scared to express your authentic self, then I guess you're not authentically being interesting. And, and that, and I think what you were alluding to was that when an acting teacher says, make an interesting choice or be interesting, the often the actor interprets that. And sometimes I think that the misguided teacher even directs them that way is literally to do something interesting, but it's not coming from a, a place of real true expression. It's coming from mm -hmm. a place of, Oh, people will think this is good. People will, people will find this different. And it's not grounded in anything though. It's not, it's, it's put on, it's like, there's a yeah. false element to it. It's, it's, it's put on top of an insecurity. And to me, authenticity, I guess this is why this kind of comes up, because when you're authentic, you don't care that people don't like how you actually are. And at least that's my interpretation of it. I could be wrong, but I think when you're really truthfully authentic, you are how you are and people can take it or leave it. They can like it or not. And it's just how you are. And so you're not, you're not trying to convince them or trick them or uh, make yourself look good in front of them. But I find that there's a, also a, an, an honesty with vulnerability where people often do like it because at least it's true. It feels real. It feels somehow grounded. And so they might not necessarily agree with it. They might not necessarily copy it or model it or do it themselves, but they go, yeah, you know, that's, that's how you are. And that's, that's just how you are, you know, and mm -hmm. it's not, you're not, you're not pretending. And I can kind of like, I think people, whether they consciously know this or not, I think they kind of respect that in a way, right? There's something really respect, respectable about somebody who is truly being themselves unapologetically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, this is Evan. And this episode is brought to you by my book. Yes, I recently released a book called The Actor's Awakening, Connecting Spirituality to Craft. Expand yourself as an actor and your craft through a spiritual perspective. Take a journey that will explore universal philosophies and insights to help you understand human nature in a profound way and develop practices to take your work to another level. Again, that's The Actor's Awakening, Connecting Spirituality to Craft, available on Kindle and paperback on Amazon. And as always, if you like the show, please subscribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I remember, uh, one of my acting teachers, uh, Larry Silverberg, I, I remember in a class that I did with him, 
oh, I think it's the first workshop that I ever did with him. And he said something like, it's like how it was always so upsetting. It was upsetting for him whenever he heard actors say something like, I want to be the next Brad Pitt. I want to be the next Meryl Streep. I want to be, you know, you know, it, it again comes from a good place, but it's was this thing of, he would say, it's like, we don't need another Brad Pitt. We don't need another Meryl Streep because we, we've, we've got them. You know, we want who we want who you are. And I think that that's, that's always such, um, you know, that's such an artist's battle because there's all these greats who came sort of before, um, that, that you admire and look up to and, and you aspire to a certain quality that they, they uphold but in trying to do it from that sort of outside in way of trying to just emulate um you know how they do things and how they you know like it's not to say that you don't learn from from them cuz you can absolutely learn from uh from the people that you admire most in the in in their field but when you're trying to just be them trying to just be a copy of them there's uh, it is that inauthentic thing. Um, apologies. Um, and and those people, you know, the reason why they are who they are and they are looked at in the way that they are is because they are who they are. You know, they came with what they had. They answered to that that fire in them for the, um, you know, the love that they had inside of them. That's what they were bringing. And that's what they continue to bring to the work that they do is they show up with that, that love first and foremost, which helps to cut through all of the anxiety of having to be somebody. Right. I think it's, you know, it's funny how, for me, at least how, how, this conversation has circled back to <laughs> our conversation from last week because it's like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's really in terms of the, what I'm becoming aware of is our, our best tool, you know, in, in combating that, that those fears and anxieties and the byproduct of it, which is putting things off, procrastinating, you know, letting things go that are important and meaningful to us the the thing that we got to show up with more strongly and pervasively is the love that we have for the thing mm. you know and and don't get me wrong sometimes sometimes it can feel like that's gone away too you know like i i I I've gone through those, those stages too, where it's just like, I don't know if I even care about this anymore. I don't even know if I, if I love this anymore. And maybe you don't, you know, and, and, and then it's up to you to find out, okay, well, what do you have love for in your life? Cause that's always the direction to go. Yeah. Right. Where is the love then? That's the direction to pursue. And, and sometimes, you know, uh, I sort of equate that, that crisis in, that crisis in faith in the, that in the thing that you're doing can very often take you more deeply into that thing than you ever were before. Um, where you can find a deeper place, a deeper meaning in it for you that just actually takes you to another, another place. Um, so it's not, it's, it's not lost, but you've only, um, become more intimate with with that thing that that you've been doing mm. yeah man i mean it's uh it, it's it's interesting i guess with 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 all of this because it does come back down to the love i mean we're talking about um we're talking about like i know what i need to do i'm not doing it and i think the thing is is that when I'm not doing what I know I need to do, I'm not in the love of the whole thing. I'm in the fear of the whole thing. And 
it's interesting as we go through these conversations we've had, because we always go on kind of trends. And I feel like you and I are working through stuff in each conversation and we're, we're sorting it out and there's common principles that we know, but we're coming back to them and we're revisiting them and we're seeing how maybe, and you can correct me if you don't feel a part of this at some point, <laughs> but um, I feel like we feel like, okay, well, I think I got that. And then something else comes up and you go, okay, I don't, I don't know what this is about. And then it turns out, okay, I go, I guess I didn't fully get that yet. I guess mm -hmm. I haven't really worked that one out yet because for me, when I think about this, I'm like, it all really just comes back down to love. It really does. Because when I know what I need to do, and let's just say I actually do know what I need to do and I'm not doing it, then it's gotta be, it's gotta be fear. I mean, it's, 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 it's gotta be fear in some form or another. There's something that's hanging me up because really the only thing that ever stops me. And I think pretty much anybody is ultimately fear, but fear I've learned in these recent months that fear doesn't always come as a boogeyman. It doesn't always come as this very overt, obvious thing. Like, Oh, I'm scared of that. Like, or spider or something, you know, like when people have a very clear and obvious fear, these, these fears that I've been navigating in the, in the most recent months are very subtle and they're almost unconscious. And if they are entirely unconscious, maybe in some ways, mm -hmm. and in a lot of it has been about bringing those fears to light. So that it, like identifying them and going, Oh, okay. So I do have a kind of fear and it's, it's not the same as like the boogeyman fear. It's more like, it's like a worry or an anxiety or some stress or something like that, or a frustration. I don't know. It's, but it's, it comes in this little, little, little weird package. And then it's going, okay, well, let's, let's bottom line is this fear. Okay, fine. I can finally accept that. Cause most of the time I'm just in denial that I'm even in fear. Like I, I'll walk around most days and be like, I don't fear anything. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, well, why won't you pick up the phone and make a call? But it's like, well, clearly you're scared of something, right? Yeah. Um, but if I come back to it and I go to the love, it's like, uh, I'm gonna, this isn't about, this isn't about anything. This is about connecting with this person. You know, that's all it is. That's all you're doing. That's step one. Just connect with them. Say hello. Tell them what's up for you, what's up for them, see what's happening. That's it. That's all this is. There's nothing. It doesn't have to yeah. be anything. There need there need be no result that yeah. you you need to control for. And if things align, great. And if they don't align, great. It's not a big deal. It's it's really irrelevant. And I had a friend who messaged me like a, almost a year ago on Facebook. They messaged me like three or four times, and I never check Facebook anymore. I just like I don't like it. And, uh, but I checked my messenger <laughs> I was like, holy crap, you've been messaging me for like a year. Did you like lose my number? And one of his messages was, are you still mad at me? <laughs> I was like, dude, I was never mad at you. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's good. That's cool. He's like, what's happening? And we just started chatting and getting connected. Yeah. But for like months, I think he thought I was mad at him about something. And he just like, he didn't know. And like, yeah. I just find that so funny because like, I can totally relate because sometimes I think people like, oh, they don't like me or they're mad at me or whatever. I think maybe, you know, who knows? Cause we, we don't know. We sometimes project or we think people's response might mean more than it actually means. Yeah. And so, you know, just to bring this all back around full circle, this is one of the big discoveries I'm having, Evan, as we've been going through these last several conversations, it's just how fear is kind of pervasive and subtle and how the answer is ultimately coming back to the love. And sometimes it's hard to come back to the love for me because I haven't even identified that I'm scared yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and, and, and I think maybe um, something I'm going to walk away with, you know, a, a lesson I'm just going to identify right now is to be a little bit um, more, more um in touch with hey man maybe you're scared maybe there's something you're a little scared about that's fine let's try to find the love in it like where's mm -hmm. the love in this right because at the end of the day if i know what i need to do and i know what i want to do there's love there so the fact that i'm not doing it means that fear there's more fear than there is love and 
I, I do think that that is ultimately kind of the equation. Um, yeah, because I think about pursuing my acting career and my filmmaking career and writing career as a young, young man. And, uh, there was always more love than there was fear. So when people told yeah. me, oh, you know what the odds are, you know, blah, 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 how hard it is. I never let that fear overcome my love for doing it and trying it and being a part of it. Yeah. And it's unfortunate when we start to let the fear side of it win, you know, and there's plenty of good reasons to let it start winning out. But, you know, uh, you know, the, but the stakes are, st are, are, too great the other way the stakes are far too great in terms of you know this one this one life that we that we have to live i something in in what you're describing about just like fear when you know it's not you sometimes you don't always have like the boogeyman to point to and for me uh, i and tell me if if you can relate to this or not but for me it's like sometimes those types of the, the types of fears that you're talking about or fear that you're talking about for me, it's like, it's like, it's like s someone slowly turning up the gravity, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in your life, you're just going about, it's just like, Oh, it's, it just feels heavy. Things just feel heavy right now. Mm -hmm. I wonder what yeah. that is. And eventually you just, you know, like, like you're just walking a little funny until eventually you're just flat on the ground <laughs> And just being like, okay, <laughs> something's wrong here. <laughs> something's totally wrong. Um, but, you know, it just like creeps up on you until suddenly you're just like, oh, no, something's seriously wrong. Um, you know, eventually that, that fear always shows its face quite, you know, within us quite strongly, mm. I feel like. Eventually it, it um, reaches a point where, where you have to just sort of, you have to confront it and, and, uh, and move through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, I think as we're, as we're navigating through this conversation, um, you know, I want to kind of extend this olive branch of an idea and see what you think instead of framing this as I know what I need to do. I know what I should be doing. What about, I know what I want to do but I'm not doing it because that's another part of this. Like, like there's mm -hmm. people probably listening who might relate to this as well, where it's like, I know that I, I want to act or I want to write screenplays or I want to make music or paint or do whatever you want to do, but I'm not doing it. And that's another form of this where it's, it's not about like, I mean, it's so easy to um, talk about kind of responsibility stuff. Like, oh, we need to do this. I have to do this. This is the work I need to do, you know, and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But what about what you, you just, your heart is calling for, you know, what about, what about that part of it? You know, I'm, I just, it kind of dawned on me. It's like lots of people, and I'm sure myself included in my own way, although I'm not thinking of an example at the moment, but there are things that I want to do or people want to do. And we know what we want to do, but we we're not doing it. I don't know, man. I want to throw that out. What do you, what do you think? What do you, any, well, anything coming up? You know, the, I mean, I, I, I think that this is related. I hope, I hope I'm not kidding myself, but you know, this is something that I also uh, did want to get into a little bit in this conversation, just in terms of what, uh, what brought me in and brought us to a certain extent to having this conversation in the first place. But you know, it's this thing of, um, of these things are not going to happen on their own. And, and I was sharing a little bit with you on that. And, and that's, you know, something that is, should not be a new notion to <laughs> many people. It certainly isn't to myself, but it's like, I feel like at this moment in my life, this is like a lesson that's uh, that's really um, going to a new level um, for for myself. Where you know, um, you know, I'm a new a new parent, and uh, all of these uh, things that used to be sort of practices of mine and, and like daily practices of mine are suddenly like have not become practices at all. And and noticing 
the absence of those things, noticing the absence of um, of sort of the the time, space, freedom, etc. to to do these things. Not that I don't still have those freedoms to do them, but they just don't exist in the same way that they used to. And really discovering how meaningful these things are and having that sense of, well, these things are not going to happen on their own. And if they are going to happen, then I need to really, I I need to make sure that they happen, you know, because otherwise they're just not, they're just not like, not, like no one's going to do them for me. And I'm the one who's paying the greatest cost for, for them not, not happening. And, um, yeah, I don't know if that was related, but I do like what you brought in with this element of like, I know what I want to do, but I'm not doing it. You know, that want is a, is a, is sometimes a thing that, that gets thrown out a lot and we get consumed by a lot of the needs of, of, or, or seeming needs. And I would just add one more element to this, which is, you know, part of what I'm going to incorporate as a practice. Cause again, some it's like, I didn't do it after last week, but this week actually clarified something for me. So, you know, sometimes it's all perfect, but, um, you know, is I, I've got to have this thing in like my, my sort of office workspace. I, I, I'm going to post it up in eye shot all the time of how can I bring love to this? Because that's got to be something that it has to be a practice. It has to be something that's reinforced because it's definitely not something that is commonly reinforced in us in, in our, in our day-to-day lives in as a way of thinking and acting. We are very much a fear driven culture. Um, so much so that it's amazing and almost miraculous i would even say that we are that we are as in a good a place as some people would argue with that but like that we are a functioning world that we haven't fucking blown ourselves up yet is is kind of miraculous um but that's something that i know i need to put up somewhere is just like, how can I bring love to this, even to the things that I don't like doing? Answering emails. Fuck me. You know, like it's, it's that, that's how I, I, my initial reaction is to, to stuff like that. And just this idea of how can I bring love to this, to this thing that I have, I, you know, some days I'm fine with it, but other days I would say more often <laughs> than than the days when it's good. There, it, it's just like I'm like, ugh, it's a drag. It's like something that I have a, a sense of um, resentment might be too strong of a word for it, but something in that vein of things. But it's like, how can I bring love to this and 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 seeing what comes up because I think that that has to be a question that you ask with genuine openness and curiosity to discovering what that thing is, you know, not as some sort of a blanket statement, I think like, or, a or you have a de facto answer to that question for this problem, but something that has to be continue, continually renewed every single time that you do it on every single day. How can I bring love to this? And being genuinely curious and open to whatever the answer is that day and and in that moment. Oh, you're muted, Brando. Yeah, I would say that it's one of those things where it's, you know, don't think of this as like an airy fairy thing. You know, I I, because I think of my younger self, someone said that to me, I would bring the love okay bring the love you know what i mean but like <laughs> like you know he, he hear us out here because i think at the end of the day like you know you, like 
like it's, it's, it's a hard concept to, to get at first because maybe it takes a little bit of life experience. Maybe it takes a little bit of kind of, um, navigating this world, which can be pretty brutal and harsh at times, but at the end of the day, it will always be the love. It will always be the love that, that saves you, you know? And I know that because like one of the things that I had the biggest struggle with as a, as a young actor was, was emotional, uh, mm-hmm. being in touch emotionally. No, I'm just going to share a quick, quick story. Um, cause I, I want to kind of hammer the point home, what you're talking about, Evan. And, and when I was growing up, um, I was a very sensitive kid and I, you know, I would have, you know, I had a lot of emotion, but I was always told like, don't cry, basically don't feel you have to be tough, whatever. And I started playing sports and then, you know, I played sports high division and we play sports high division there's no, there's not a lot of room for emotion. It's really, you got passion, you got anger, uh, which are kind of almost the same thing. Um, but you're not really allowed to express sadness. You're allowed to express joy when you get a result, uh, when you get a goal, when you win, but you're not really supposed to be happy at a good game when you play high division. Like that's not really what people are happy about that people are happy about and you get rewarded for the, the points and the wins and that type of stuff. So you, you know, for me, a lot of things became very results driven. And also as a young man, because I wasn't, because there's certain things were hard in my life with bullying and also, um, some things that happened just with family and whatnot, I learned to suppress a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions that I had. And then I remember I got into acting and I loved acting. It was so fun, but for somebody who had been kind of suppressed their emotions, going into acting is like, okay, now you have to access them. And I had made a certain kind of seemingly like a harmony of existing without feeling too much, you know, it was kind of like trying to, trying to, you know, keep that in check all the time. And what happens is you, you numb yourself out in a way, like that's what I did at least. And so I remember early on, uh, you know, I was getting really close to getting these big roles and and my agent would always ask for feedback and the feedback, and I still have these in, in saved documents, but the feedback all, almost every single time was great work, technically awesome, but not enough emotional depth. So for the callback, bring more emotional depth. That was it. Always, always, always. Mm. And so I was always trying to get to the emotion, get to the access, the emotion. And and it was so hard for me. And I, I, you know, I remember spending a whole day just like listening to sad music and trying to get, you know, at, and then all of a sudden the audition came and it's gone. It's not there. And I'm like, oh God, I tried so hard. And then I, uh, eventually I met this acting teacher, actually, uh, Matthew Harrison, who he did this emotional prep work. And that was extremely helpful for me because what I learned through that was that emotion, all my emotions were all available, but they all would come through the love and all this trying to get yourself emotional and do all that. It's you're really not working with the source. The source is love. Because if you think about it this way, when you are say mourning someone's death, for example, it's because there's love, The, the, the losing them, the pain that that might feel all that, that's all an extension of love. That's all just like byproduct of love, right? Or the lack of love or the missing of love, but it all comes back down to the core of love. And once I understood this, man, did things ever change, you know, as far as like what I could access and what could come out of me, Um, you know, and, and I realized what I had done in my younger years by numbing my emotions was really, was not giving myself access to love. And it's kind of sad, really, when you think about it, right? Because you're basically Mm -hmm. restricting the love from yourself. And so that's why when I was younger, I might have scoffed at you saying something Mm -hmm. like that, because I was so out of touch with it, that I didn't realize its importance and its power. Say one more thing, Evan, just if you don't mind. I remember us doing this exercise uh, with Ted Whittle, who we had on the podcast, you know, one of my favorite acting teachers has ever lived. (laughs) Just a great dude. And uh, I remember he was helping coach me on something. And I remember I had to do something about loss and I was talking about my grandma and he goes, what did her hands look like? 
And it's like you you can sometimes something specific can 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 help you touch in, but like my just to kind of give you a a, a story about my grandma, my grandma died of lung cancer. And when someone dies of lung cancer, they die slowly and they wither away. And there's a picture. See, I'm getting emotional. There's a picture of me and my grandma and she's in a wheelchair and she's flexing like Hulk Hogan and I'm behind her flexing. It's so beautiful, but she's so frail. And man, it's, it's just the love. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but when you get in touch with the love, man, all the emotion that you could ever dream of, that well is so, so deep. So, yeah, man, I mean, I'm talking to artists here. Look, guys, <laughs> just get to the love, man. Like, all the gold is in the love. Yeah. And, and I mean, I keep learning this lesson over and over and over again in various different ways but it all really just comes back to love well apparently we needed to uh even after just talking about it we needed to remind ourselves of it yet yet again yeah um i wanted to just quote something here because i've always loved this quote um your task is not to seek for love but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it hmm that's uh, from Rumi. I knew it was Rumi. I knew oh, it. Oh, yeah. Rumi. I was going to say it. The, but... the most, the most, I believe the most published poet of all time. Uh. I think, uh, I think still to, to this day, if you look like the, if you look at like the, like the most, um, like, like Rumi's still selling books like you would not believe <laughs> <laughs> collections of Rumi's poems. Yeah. Um, his poetry is just, is just. It is just extraordinary. Um, but yeah, just that, what you were saying just made me think of it. It's just like, you know, it's, it's all, it's, it's all about it. It's all about the thing. And, and it's just about, you know, allowing it, allowing it to come through. And it's, it's, it's funny. Like it, one of those barriers is us kind of scoffing at it, you know, totally, like, <laughs> totally. That's definitely like, one of mine. It was, yeah, yeah. It's like the limit that we put on it. And it's just like, you know, would we, do we, is that even something we would intelligently want to put a limit on, you know? Yeah. Kind of a stupid thing that we would, that we would do thinking about it. <laughs> but anyhow. Yeah. I don't have a beer. Uh, so why don't you tell us what you're drinking yeah, today? I, you know what? I'm drinking the same one that I had. I didn't get an oh, opportunity okay. to, to well, I'll get share it again. Give it another shout one. out. Yeah, absolutely. And especially since, since this is a, a, a very local craft brewer rate, right, rate, right, close down next to me they've got such a beautiful brewery it's like it's also a farm you can buy your you can buy eggs there <laughs> and they oh, do yeah. farmers markets and stuff there but this is uh from persephone brewing company and i'm just drinking their uh their pale ale no fancy name just pale ale and it's uh and it's solid you know like it's it's everything you would want from a pale ale enjoying it for this conversation as i did in last week's so hmm. Um, why don't I, uh, go ahead first and then I'll let you close things off. So, sure. um, yeah, I mean, I think that we, we did some really good digging here on this thing of like, you know, why aren't you doing the thing that you, you want to do or doing the thing that you, you know, doing the thing, that you know, you, you need to do. And I, for, from what I'm pulling from this conversation, what we we grabbed is is that you know it comes back down to this thing of we're putting our minds in it we're, we're focusing on the wrong things you know we're not putting our minds on on the things that matter we're not putting our minds on the love what is the love what is the thing that that brought you to the table you know and and it's got to be it's got to be something that you love it can't it can't be it can't be for the money and it can't be for the fame and it can't be, that's going to just, that that's going to be a, a paralyzing and a stupid endeavor, <laughs> you know, just to still like, you're going to spend your time, your whole life, just doing something to be famous, you know, to be like in, in effect doing something to be loved by other people. Mm. You know what I mean? That That's not, 
a good way to go because that's that's a uh, an endless pit that you doesn't matter how many shovelfuls of praise that you throw down in there. It's not going to, it's never going to land in anything. It's never going to fill. Um, but when you come to the table to do something with real genuine love that's in you, that you, that you bring with you where you go and to the things that you do. And I think this also, this question of, how can I bring love to this? Or where is the love in this even can help us to, to just in the things that aren't our favorite things can still keep us connected in a meaningful way to the things that we're doing. And, uh, I know for me, I'm, I'm really going to make, uh, a point of, of effort to make this something that I'm just asking myself every single day as many times as I can do it during the day to just, just say like, check in with what am I doing in this moment? You know, maybe I'm sending an email, maybe I'm teaching a class, maybe I'm making, making dinner and just how can I bring love to this? Mm. Or how can I bring more love to this thing and, and see what comes up and, and, and because I mean, I, <laughs> as hokey as you kind of pointed out as, as, as a lot of it sounds, it also sounds really stupid to not do it yeah. at the same time. Totally. So, cause why wouldn't you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to do that is maybe the better thing to be asking about that whole hokey notion. So that's what I got. Brandon. Hmm. Well, I would say that what come what's come up for me here as we've gone down this road is is do you want to be ruled by fear or guided by love? And that's that's kind of the question I think that I'm kind of left with here. And so the answer becomes quite simple and obvious to me. I want to be guided by love. I don't want to be ruled by fear. And when I look at this thing of why am I not doing what I want to do? or what I know I need to do, that's because I'm letting fear rule me. And it's, it's making the decisions. And so another way of maybe looking at this is I, I think what I'll do moving forward is going, well, you know, what, how would love guide this? You know, if, if this was coming from a place of love, what would, what would be the most love loving way or the most love lovingly guided way to go about this. And I think it kind of answers a lot of the questions for me, you know, um, you know, and I, I recently made a mistake, um, you know, well, I, I realized I made a mistake that, you know, whatever that kind of, um, you know, I took a chance. It didn't work out and made a mistake. Fine. And at first I felt embarrassed and I was like, again, oh, I messed up, blah, 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 blah. I was stupid. And I was like, nah, you know what? I'm going to forgive myself. And then a quote came across my, you know, this week came across and it was like, people who have never made a mistake have never tried anything in their lives. And I thought about that and I was like, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to love the fact that I tried, you know, and I talked to a few friends and they were like, you know, you, you, you trusted and that's a good thing. You know, you, you took a chance, you, mm -hmm. you, you tried to do something, didn't work out, didn't work out the way you thought it would work out, but it's not, you know, there's lots of lessons. There's lots of great things that have come from it. Um, you know, uh, it, maybe it didn't go as planned, but you, you know, you took a chance, you tried, you, you, you did a, you did something with good intent and you learn, you know, and I think uh, there's a lot of reasons why we don't do stuff that we want to do or need to do because we're so scared of the mistake that might happen. And sometimes it does. And so I think about this and I go, yeah, but is it, is it better to have tried and learned than to never have tried at all and learned nothing, you know? And I mean, I, I get the whole point where, you know, well, it's like, 
you know, maybe you don't make mistakes. Maybe it doesn't cost you anything and maybe that's safe. But I, I, I also had another quote come across my, my plate as well this week, which is that people, well, it wasn't more of a sentiment as opposed to a quote, I suppose, but it was like, people often regret when people are dying and they're in their last, their last breaths, they usually regret the things they didn't do than the things they did do. And so, you know, I, I think as again, I'm reminded, you know, picking up the phone to call my one friend to the thousand pound phone and I called and they were so thankful and grateful. Um, that was a good outcome, but there was a win in, in doing it. Had I never made that call, I would never be able to share that story. I would never have that experience. I would have never had that kind of shift and transformation. So, you know, you got to take a chance. You got to try. And so this thing that you want to do or you know you need to do, I mean, look, I think love is take a chance. That's what love guides. It says, take a chance. This might not work out. This might not go, but like, you know, you got to, you got to try, you know, you got to, and look, I'm not saying be stupid about it. I'm not saying like, take, be careless, be careful, be, be caring, but also, you know, if it's fear and you're just scared, then I think it's worth challenging the rule of fear, you know, because in my experience, there is a freedom in love and freedom doesn't come with cushions on every fall but it does let you at least be be autonomous and i would rather be autonomous than stuck thank you for listening in on our conversation today we hope you found something helpful that you can carry forward with you head over to our website wayoftheartist.com for more free exclusive material and learn about the show if you haven't already, please support us by subscribing to the show, sharing it with people you know, and keeping compassionate, creative conversation going.